Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Today, we are going to deep dive into the, uh, this session, which will help us to know the price of silence, which we are all paying, and the hidden cost of withholding feedback in teams. First of all, a bit about me. I am program manager at Excellent, and I like to play flute, and I explore superhero movies, and I read lots of management books. I'm certified in PMP, ITIL, Agile methodologies, CSM, and CSS, CSPO. I'm having a good experience in project, product, and program management. Uh, right now, I'm implementing uh, proactively uh, all these strategies, road mapping, in portfolio building up in my company, which is support. I started my community contributions just last year, so a couple of, and this today is the third one. Now I will hand over to my co-presenter, Jaspreet. Thank you, Mukul. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session. My name is Jaspreet Singh, and I'm a senior project manager over here uh, at Excellent. Uh, the best part is that like, I'm connected with the Excellent for the last 11 years. I'm about to complete 11 years in July. And uh, uh, initially, my role was the quality assurance. Then I switched to the PM. Now I'm a senior PM role. My strategy is like kind of the result oriented. So I try to focus on the problem solving skills and try to collaborate with my stakeholders, try to connect with my peers. Uh, that helps me to learn and grow. The best part is like I love blog writing. You can see uh, my few blogs on the LinkedIn, on the excellent website as well. And on the personal level, I'm a big fan of cricket. I'm playing cricket for the last 20 years. Here's a list of my contributions uh, as a speaker. Uh, uh, this is my 11th community contribution, uh, in which seventh, seven are the Drupal cans, and this is my fourth Drupal con as a speaker. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so how this session will help you? So this session will provide you the insights uh, about the, the effect of the withholding feedback, and provide you the actionable strategies uh, to navigate and overcome uh, the consequences with a greater resilience and effectiveness. So what would be the learning objectives throughout the session? The first one is like understanding about this, uh, the hidden cost of silence. Second is how to build uh, the open communication for the culture. And the third is like how to overcome the communication barriers and empowering the team for the success. So in this presentation, like we'll cover up the agenda. Let's start with the feedback factoid, like what is the, the fact behind that? Feedback analogy. Introduction of two characters. Uh, that, that's an interesting part of this presentation where I'll showcase my story and we'll share the couple of uh, characters which will help you to connect the dots as well. Next is what are the, the hidden costs of our silence and its in, in impacts. Next is like how to build the culture for the open communication. That's in the best part of this slide, which is like power of fee. So a lot of facts will be covered up under the power of fee as well. And this power of fee will empower your team. Absolutely. The last but not the least, which we will we'll cover up the Q&A as well. So the first thing which I would like to start with, like it's for you. like. First question for you, what stops you to share the feedback with others? So anyone would like to share your opinion, that would be helpful. Yep, please. Okay. That's stopping you. Yeah, please. Don't hurt their feelings. Oh, that's a common one. Yeah. Yep, please. Oh, okay. Okay. So trying to find a more proactive way to make it this hard sometimes. That's interesting. Yep. Oh, it means doesn't accept the feedback well? Oh, okay. That's interesting. Anyone else? Yep. No real impact. Sorry? No real impact. 
no real impact, okay? Anyone else? No? Thank you so much for the answers. So in this presentation, we will cover up a lot of key areas and definitely a lot of questions would be answered in this presentation. In case few questions are left, then you can reach out to us at the end of the presentation as well. Moving towards with a factoid, like I'm not sure if you are aware about that, like 72% people, the employers feel that like if the managers will start sharing the feedback in a very corrective way, that will help us help them to learn and grow. So it's not the me which I'm saying, it's a, the survey of the Harvard Business University. That's an interesting uh, quote from, from the Brenny Brown. Like while it is true that empathy makes you feel vulnerable, it is also true that it is the most courageous thing you will ever do. Here Brenny Brown is saying that like, uh, even though like you have to face the empathy in a very, uh, it will make you exposed and, or vulnerable, but it will help you to connect with others in a way to understand their feelings, that will make you the courage. So, so here's a feedback analogy. Feedback is like a garden, like that requires the nurturing and the attention to flourish with each constructive input serving as a seed for growth and improvement. So here I would like to showcase a one story of me which I faced in the past uh, you can call it as like uh, when I was working as a project manager, not as a senior project manager. Four years back, like me and Mukul both are working together. He was a program manager. I was working as a uh, project manager. So uh, I was not habitual with the feedback receptive mode. I was because the culture was there, but I was not expecting the things in terms of feedback receiving point of view. Because as for me, the things were working very well. So when I suddenly I receive a feedback from Mukul, that which I was not expecting that. So in a very reactive mode, I was not ready to accept the feedback. I reached out to Mukul. Uh, at the one conversation, the conversation didn't conclude it. Then we went on another conversation after a week. We realized that like, uh, like in terms of empathetic point of view, I tried to understand his feeling, his perspective, it helps me to learn and grow. Because then after that conversation, I started preparing the action items for me. And when I started working on in that direction, I started preparing the roadmap. With that roadmap, I tried to work on those key areas. And in that journey, I would say, empathy is the one key which helped me to learn and grow. And thanks to Mukul. <laughs> because he's the one who, helped me to learn and grow because now I'm a senior project manager just because he provided me the feedback based upon the actionable strategies. Then after I started working in that direction, that helps me to learn and grow. So that's a story of me. So I would like to introduce two characters over here. One is Alex, second one is the Maya. So Alex is the kind of the person who observe that or he assume that like things are working so good because he's not ready to accept the feedback because in his culture, the feedback is not exist, I would say. He thinks things are going well. If he, uh, they are doing the mistakes, then he, it, he's continuing doing the mistakes. On the other side, Ma is a kind of another version who is receptive towards the feedback, ready to accept the change, and things are going well for Ma. So the version 1.0, it's not a kind of version 1.0, version 2.0, it's a thought like version one, it's a one level down, and version two, it's a one level upgraded one. Like with the, if we are moving towards the next level, definitely you should accept for the change. So in the version 1.0, Alex definitely is a hardworking employee because he reached to that level, so I won't call it as non-hardworking or non-productive. He is hardworking, but who was stuck in the version 1.0 despite having a lot of potential, and but Alex could not quite reach his the best level. The reason feedback is was very rare in in the Alex team. 
colleagues were very hesitant to share the feedback. Without feedback, Alex was not aware how the things are going, if there is a scope of improvement, where he's supposed to work on. So he kept making the same mistakes again and again. As a result, project didn't went well, things were not working so well for him, so he was not progressing very well. Let's do the flip side of the coin, which is Maya. So Maya, on the, on the other side, he was on the progression level, who was on the path of change, because he was very receptive. Uh, he, she was in that culture where openness promotes. Uh, in, his, uh, in her culture, uh, people were ready to listen to each other, ready to speak up, open up with the, with the communication factors and collaboration was there. With this factor, Maya was doing really well. She was on the 2.0. She, her projects were going really well because she was open towards the stakeholders as well as to the peers as well. That helped her to learn and grow. Moving towards the turning point. So when Alex and Maya both worked together in you know, one project, they faced, not they, Alex faced a lot of consequences. Because Alex faced a hard time because where Maya was ready to accept the changes, on other side, Alex was stuck in that direction. So Maya did a great job. Uh, she got the success in her projects. But on the other side, Alex fell, fallen down uh, in that level. So in the conclusion point of view, Alex realized his mistakes, what he was doing. He started having a conversation with Maya, her, his colleagues, collecting the feedback, open up with the communication. And then after, he started working in that direction where Maya is already there. So then after they both worked together, started working in, in one direction, ready to open for the change, ready to work in that direction where openness, they can maintain the culture for the openness as well. So they wanted everyone to feel heard. Effective listening factor was already there and empowered to the team as well. So this was the whole story of the feedback with the version 1.0 and the 2.0. So, could be the case where the culture is there where the feedback we do not promote, or I got few answers that like someone don't want to hurt the someone's feelings, or people try to hesitate to share the feedback. Sometimes we want to share the feedback, but we hesitate to share the feedback. It could be the case like the person is on the another level or the director level, so we don't want to face the consequences. That could be the reason. But the best part is that like, if you could start with the positive note in terms of feedback, come up with the, with the normal note, then after come up with the, the things where he's supposed to improve, instead of saying directly remarks or the bluntly remarks, make sure to share the feedback in a very empathetic way so that along with the action items, so person will understand what are those action items he's supposed to work on it. So I'm the one live example where I worked on those examples, also the action items which Mukul has already provided to me, that helped me to learn and go to the deck. So this is it from my side. I'm handing over to Mukul for the next further slides. Thanks, Jaspreet, and what an incredible journey. Jaspreet traveled multiple promotions in very less years, and he he's heading towards his third promotion. <laughs> so. Now we can see uh, what are the actually, we will go a little bit more in detail. And I will say that uh, silence is not acceptance. Uh, there is lots of hidden costs, cost of silence. And let's look first of all, what is the definition of hidden cost? When we are silent, actually we are not giving something to someone who needs to know it, our perspective. When we are a team member, we have to share the inputs. And when we are not sharing our perspective and inputs, that is going to create some gaps. Like if you can compare a project and you are not receiving UAT feedback, what will happen? The <laughs> side will be not user accepted and it will be having not uh, less success, not that acceptable rate, and that will be the cost of silence. Now let us have a clear understanding of these consequences, which will help individuals and organizations to grow professionally, personally, and there are many examples which you can see that it's not our professional life. Our personal life is also impacted. Like a parent, we are not able to give feedback or receive feedback. 
we are having conflict with spouse and we have to be ensure that our feedback and perspectives are shared mutually. Impacts of hidden cost of silence. Missed opportunity for growth. Someone sharing perspective, like client sharing perspective, we know what they are sharing and there is a scope of new features. User sharing their perspective, we know what they want. That's why many organizations have a feedback form, airlines asking for feedback, and that's why they want to grow more and add more features. It's more business, more opportunities. And we all miss that if we are not open and that is a hidden cost of silence. Lack of innovation. As a team, we can innovate so much things. But when we are not doing it, we are limiting ourselves in sharing our perspectives. We are not collaborating. We are not truly strengthful. We are missing many innovations. Increased stress. Consider if some of you have some feedback about this session, not sharing, and it will be not good for us, for you, because when we hold our feedback, our blood pressure and everything, stress increases. In a team member, if a QA is having a feedback for a developer, and if they are not sharing, they will be not a happy team member. And as a result, stress will increase. Poor decision making, obviously. Five people in a team not sharing perspectives, their decision making is not complete. When it's not complete, it will not be effective. Now, when a team is not engaging with itself, then they have a different uh, low level of engagement, different and low level of morale, lost opportunities in terms of missed opportunities we discussed, but we have uh, opportunities which are not even taken a shape. Missed one which have taken a shape, but we are missing those. Lost one, we are losing them before they can be grown, and they can be grown when we are connecting with each other. We are not silent. Conflict and escalations. If I'm having, if I haven't shared my feedback with Jaspreet, and Jaspreet could have not shared the feedback with me, we could be conflicting and it could be not fruitful. When we are able to uh, share our perspective, we both got promotions and what is helping us is to increase ourselves and otherwise cost of silence is also conflict and escalations. Culture. We all represent our companies and our company's culture. And when we are not open, we are impacting our company, like in a team, like in a project, in front of the client. Now, question is, we are all talking about the impact of these silence. But how about to, how to build this? First of all, the silence can be, can not be there when we have open communication. What are the quick ways? to build this open communication. We, go in, we will go in detail. There's a next slide which is very powerful, but let's take a brief before that. Lead by example. If I have to say my team, okay, share feedback with each other, but am I sharing that? Let's take an example of personal life. If my kid is just watching me to watch TV when I am using my mobile or I am eating and using watching TV and tomorrow I feel I'll say, while you eat, don't watch TV, then will he follow? <laughs> First, I should do it. So in professional and personal life, we have to make sure whatever we are suggesting, first of all, let's try on ourselves. Lead by examples. Promote active listening. We are so much uh, lost in our thoughts that we are forgetting what other person is about to say. And that is helpful to know because their perspective is increasing our knowledge. That's why promote active listening. Trust. Trust should be something like that. And open communications, basic blur is trust. When you trust, if they, you need not to think much. You should develop that much trust that if someone says something different, they should not feel uncomfortable, fearful. Even if a, a new joinee says something to CEO, you should not feel that his job is at risk. That trust should be there, should not be broken with one or two incidences. Like in spouses, when they are working, uh, like creating a family, if they don't trust each other, they cannot live together long. So trust is something which allows you to do mistakes. It gives you enough room to let the person know when the appropriate time is. It is not letting you break that relationship. In our professional life, let's trust each other in our teams. Establish clear expectation. What you want, actually, you should share. Don't, don't anticipate that your team will know automatically. 
have expectation document, RASI documents. And when you have that, everyone knows, like I'm a program manager, if I'm talking to my team, I should be talking in a way that what I expect from you and what you expect from me, let's talk about that. And it is going to be a clear, like a same level field, and we share each other's expectation with each other, then there is very clear expectation and there is very large scope that we will not be fulfilling that expectation. Unspoken expectation is most dangerous one, personal or professional life. Create safe space. Trust and safe space go hand in hand, hand in hand. Safe space is very much required. If you don't let, you, if you are not giving your team member, your company people, that safe space, they will never open it. You have to let them know, opening up, sharing perspective is not going to risk anything. It is going to benefit every one of us. Promote healthy debate. Healthy debate might sometimes look like a conflict, but you know where the barrier is. Mutual trust, safe space, and you know, nothing is going to be threatening after that. And when you open up your team to share your views, no project can really fail. A project is failing because one of two team members knew, knew that it is going to come but did not share. Ask them to have trust in the system. You are going to promote their open views, even if they say, scrap this project, what you have taken is a shit. <laughs> but let them say this. They have something in their mind and perspective that can really change your roadmap. And that is going to be a deal winner. Increase feedback is the summary of many things, but feedback is something we should create a process kind of, like rotational process, uh, optional process, uh, training, uh, because feedback looks like very just saying what comes to your mind, but it's not like that. You have to f take few steps. We'll take a uh, little bit more detail in the next slide. Recognize and reward. In the end, feedback sub parts are recognized and reward also. We always consider feedback as negative. It is going to be shared when you have to do some escalation. No, not at all. I think they just error in the slide. The second sentence, recognize and reward, should be the sub point of the increased feedback. <laughs> I mean to say feedback includes positive and negative both. And you have to not always consider if you're sharing feedback, you're only sharing the criticism. No, you are sharing your perspective, which includes both. Act on feedback. We have done lots of talks and everything in the team, but uh, where are the action items? Let's energize this conference room. We have a powerful slide, power of E. And this is first powerful point, which is empathy. Many of us know about it, and many of us greatly confused about empathy and sympathy. Well, empathy is very different. Understanding others' feeling, perspective, and experience is first point before you share your perspective with them. It's like you are merging your code, but you don't know what the existing code is, what the existing features are. You have to read your, uh, your existing code, and then you can merge and create new code. Similarly, when you're sharing your perspective, understand their perspective first. When you know their perspective, your perspective can land on them better. An empathy, as a part of it, create deeper connection and lasting relationship. I would jump to next point, which is emotions. Now, I'm feeling, say in my team, my project is late, and I'm feeling angry. I have to acknowledge my, acknowledge my emotion. I have to also acknowledge emotions of the person in front of me. They might be also feeling angry, they might be feeling sad, they might be feeling tired, they might be feeling not valued. So we are not solving all these emotions. And emotions just needs acknowledgement and you have to value that. Sadness, fear, everything is having its own place. Just acknowledge it. Build rapport and create supportive and inclusive environment where emotions can survive equally. We are not AI. We are not bots. We have emotions and that's making us very, very different. That's a gift. So let's acknowledge our emotions, value those emotions of yours and others and then you can move to the third point, which is in power of E. After having empathy and emotional intelligence within you and with your team, you are into the third step of building the trust. This trust, which we talked about just a couple of slides before, is a place where people can do mistakes. You can let them be imperfect. They can share what they feel. 
their perspective can be wrong, but doesn't mean that, and first thing, perspective can be wrong from their perspective. Subjectivity is there when something we say is wrong or right. So let's move out of the things what is wrong and right, but their perspective can be different for you. That is the right word I think we can use. So it can be different, your perspective can be different, and let them let them have the space and that, that if they share their different perspective, your trust will not break. Ensure people are heard, they are valued, they are understood. That will help them to know you that they, you are there to listen to them. That trust is required before you move towards sharing pr your perspective. Engagement. Consider if there's a team who have empathy towards each other, they feel each other's emotions, they trust each other, but are very less in energy, right? So what will happen? Lack of energy will make them not engaged. They have to be enthusiastic. They have to participate. They have to make sure they are actively engaged in every communication. They are listening. They are doing active listening. In fact, asking questions, clearing doubts. Until and unless it's done, you will never know you connected for some team meeting and agenda is changed to pizza party and everything is changed. So you have to stick to your agenda of clarifying doubts, asking questions, and that is the true meaning of engaging on what you thought to be engaging, your team plans. Second last point in the power of fee, establish expectations. We talked about it little before. Clearly communicate what you are looking for, what is your expectation from each role in your team, and that is to be done with everyone. A QA should share what they expect from a developer. A developer should share what they expect from a UI UX person. As a whole team should share with the client what they expect in terms of AC, expect, uh, acceptance criteria, what they expect in terms of timeline, what client expect in terms of timeline, quality, what program manager, project manager expect from each other, what they expect from the company to be supported, what company should expect from them. Initially, it might look too much to write, but you will see there is a pattern. There is repetitive things, and you will need initially more exercise, more time to do it, and it is a form of RASI. And in very soon, you will see the clearly expect written communication expectations and performance expectations team expectations with each other when it is there, you know what to do. Earn mutual respect. Understand each other's needs and concerns. These expectations sometimes shared what I need, but no one says what I don't need from you. So you know, concerns are something I can share. I always expect less work, right? I can also share that, and now let QA figure out how it can be done. Need not to be perfect encourage open communication in the end. And that is the real feedback. And we don't want to label it in the end like a feedback feedback because open communication, when it is there, positive thoughts, uh, what you feel good, what you feel is not working, can be shared. Diversity of thoughts includes what I feel I can share. And in the end, when it's there, I'm ready to celebrate success and learn from my failures. And my team's failures, my team can learn from each other's success and failures. That is actually the essence of feedback and completion of feedback. So uh, Jaspreet and me are now ready to answer any of your questions. Thanks. Thank you. And There's that feedback for you. Like, <laughs> I created one more line, like before merging your codes, mm -hmm. let's merge our thoughts. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you can share your questions. We will try best to answer. In case uh, we are not able to answer all the questions, these are our contact detail. Yeah. Each person on the team participates from their perspective. 
and I hope that you guys get me healthy. But what if you're concerned? What if what are some of the things that we can do to make sure that we are not um, a making assumptions about how the culture that the person's coming from is going to flavor or color that feedback we may be giving? I mean, is it something as simple as hey? I've got some things I want to talk about. Do you have a preferred way? I mean, do we have tools that can help with that? I can I can uh, answer in one uh, way, but I think I will repeat my question because I think recording guy said that if we don't repeat the question, it will be not recorded. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, you mean to say that uh, there's a team with diversity and they have developer from another country and QA from another country, and when we have to share feedback, then there's a big challenge, and what is the expectation from feedback is always an open question. Yeah, how do we make sure? Yeah. Is there any tool available for that? Is there any tool available for that? I yeah. think, I think first of all, um, we we have to make sure that what is we are expecting from them. It is just feedback and open communication. Let's write down few points. What is meaning of open communication for every one of them? What they think is they would like to share. Some may say my culture doesn't allow me to share much, and and okay, we are okay with that. Everyone knows that person is lacking less communication and it is okay. And someone says, I like to have pizza parties on every Friday and I can talk anything on beer, right? <laughs> yes, so you can, you can let them know what is their understanding of open communication. And then someone says, I don't like any communication. Just an example. Now you have to find a middle path. The person who is very much different saying, I don't like any communication, the people who are saying, I like lots of communication, you have to see, can it be possible a couple of times in we, we interact? A person who is not open in uh, team meetings, can it be possible we do one-to-one? -one? So first of all, we have to know their expectation from open communication, what is our expectation from open communication, and let's find a middle path. Now when we are on the middle path, create a new middle path after some time. Mm -hmm. Walk the, towards them where they can comfortably reach, but don't push. Right. And that is the tool, you have to have patience. Okay. Yes. Yep. Um, I would like to add one more thing. Uh, in during the pandemic, uh, most of the companies moved from the on-site, from the offices to the remote. We are working truly remote since, like, I joined this company 2013. Yeah. So I, from 2013 onward, like, I'm working as a remote in this organization. So many companies faced uh, challenges, like how they're supposed to operate. It would be very difficult for them to have a communication with the team members right. over the Zoom and Teams or any other platform. So they were facing challenges, but to be honest, like our company did not face single challenge during the pandemic related to the open communication or any sort of level, which I've already asked for that. Okay, reason behind is that because we are our managers, like we our on another hierarchy or there is a one more hierarchy like kind of director level, we are already connecting in the once in a month in order to know each other, in order to know better, so that helps us to learn like what are the preferences for the other person. That encourages us in order to, so that another person is also, if you are open to others, another person will definitely open to you as well. That is a one way, uh, it's not a kind of one way, it's a two way communication. If you will do that, that will help you to reduce the, the lack of communication challenges. Or if you want to know the preferences for the other people, so this is the one way in order to do that. So once in a, one, uh, once in a month connect, would help you to reduce those challenges. I think I'd like to add to that. I, I've been uh, working with the same organization, and I think uh, what helps us the most is you know having policies and you know code of conduct sort of things yep. documented very well, and being in tune to why we are doing those policies. So yep. we used to open documents and uh, see what that document hmm. was. Yeah. Yeah. I thank you so much, Sushil. I like inclusive and diversity. We definitely prefer that because uh, we are working with the the outside India as well, within India as well. 
uh, we speak multiple languages as well. So let's suppose you are working with the three different countries, India, Hungary, or any other one. So the language barriers would be there as well. So we, ha we are making sure that like with the policies, like at least the, all the people should understand a single language. For example, English, like le if I'm, I know Hindi better or the Punjabi language better, then I try to, if I'm sharing anything on the specific channel, then we are translating with the uh, reference language as well, which is common to others as well. Like this way, we are able to connect. And because of policy, inclusive and diversity, like uh, that is already in place over there. So that will help. Uh, you are talking about the recognition or the feedback? Yeah, the tools for feedback. Uh, tools for feedback. Uh, uh, right now, if in the past, we were using uh, sevengeese.com, and now we are using Lipsum. Uh, that will help you to schedule a call with the team members. Uh, in order to understand more, you can schedule a list of questions. You can ask answer to that. Uh, within the specific template, you can use uh, model which is SBIA, which is uh, situation, what was the situation when it occurs, what was the behavior at the time, what was the impact. Make sure, don't forget the important key item which is action items. If you will specify the action items, people, the another person will understand your perspective as well. Why are you sharing the feedback? Based upon the action items, you are sharing the positive fact in front of him as well, so that another person will relate to your perspective as well. I hope I was able to answer your question. Yes, you can find the this, this same model on the internet as well. Okay. Yeah, please. I, yeah, yes. <coughs> Good. I think uh, it's a it's a right uh, understanding. So in between, I was uh, just uh, I missed one point also to share. Like uh, when we share feedback, then we have to ensure uh, that we establish a horizontal relationship. We are many of us are managers, many of us are developers, but we forget that we end up into our company like a vertical relationship. We consider managers on the top of us and our team uh, uh, blow us. So that's something like a vertical relationship. And if you read uh, one book, which is Courage to be the Disliked, it beautifully describes what it impact will bring if we establish horizontal relationship. Horizontal relationship means everyone at equal level. If you're in your family, if you see, if you be feeling like uh, equivalent to your kid, then they will be more gelling with you. You will always remain their friend. Uh, yes, human to human. In your company, if you are a boss, then you have to drop that word boss. First of all, you are one of them. And that is horizontal relationship. And this book, Courage to be this, like says, in your life, if you had one place also at a vertical relationship, then you are not truly at horizontal relationship. Even if tomorrow you see a homeless or someone, then you should not feel privileged because that's their working, uh, they're, that's their lifestyle they have chosen. You have chosen a different lifestyle and you both are just different and no one is up or down. So it's something like uh, you have to consider uh, there's no one is doing better or bad. You are just at horizontal level. Everyone is having different choices and different role to play. Another another book I will 
the command is uh, integrity which is from handy cloud it is going to open up uh, your perspective in terms of what is integrity integrity means we have to continually follow what we say sometimes we say something and do something differently and when it's a hard time something like it is very great saying it is very easy to say it is very easy to do right when everything is right around you but when something is going different you are driving a very a uh, good car and suddenly someone scratches it and someone who is very much famous for his patience or her patience now that person is out of his <laughs> real persona right so what will happen that integrity says in any tough time also you remain sticking to what your understanding is it's not saying to follow something it is saying what you want to follow just follow that at all the time so when you are at that everyone can trust you because there is less variations you show the same persona you suddenly someone you say to someone i am open to receive feedback and then suddenly that feedback is shared your face is changed you are in anger and you suddenly take revenge by various means so integrity says that you have to follow what you want to follow and that will give trust because people can trust your integrity your rules which you are following and that's again opening up the communication these two books great learnings and i think uh, in my excellent <laughs> the culture we have performance coaches they give tons of books to us <laughs> i can recommend hundreds of it but these two can help you to many of these uh, books learning we included here and many others learning we included in this session that will help you a lot in sharing open feedback any other question i was having trouble with the book i was going to ask you after that if it's coming yes so yeah you can write henry cloud henry cloud. henry cloud's book it's integrity and the uh, second book is courage to be disliked courage to be disliked right well i already got that <laughs> <laughs> but uh, courage to be disliked book you have to be very slow and have patience to understand it it's something like initially it will feel it's going somewhere else but when you conclude you know what you have gained after it reading yeah Any other question? Have you guys experienced anything or have any examples of where you've taken empathy too far to where it actually hinders productivity? Um, you can understand that empathy is something like uh, endless, and it might feel that you want to do their work as well. So you have to stop there. That empathy is not giving you any action in terms to perform uh, something like. Uh, someone is capable of doing but you are thinking my empathy enables me to also do that action for him or her yes. so you have to stop here empathy is inside you have to feel inside it's not giving you any action item outside yeah. Yeah. when you start doing action item outside that will know that you have crossed that empathy boundary empathy enables you in, in your understanding that's so that you can move towards next step you can change your perspective when you share your opinion with that person I can give you one more example over here, uh, with the with the same line for the let's suppose a PM or the developer both are working together, and uh, usually we heard that like uh, PMs are reaching out to the developer, pinging out like uh, what's the latest progress, like we have to deliver at the end of the day. So uh, make sure to showcase empathy at the time. That will help you out to go for the productive development. Reason behind this is that let them work freely. in the morning if you are having the dsm do that these are the five things which we need to deliver at the end of the day try to check it out and if you are pinging in every hour it will reduce the productivity if you are pinging at that checking at the end of the day because you are following the empathetic level where you understand that developer is already working in that direction because we already discuss at that time trust factor will al already be there because manager supposed to trust that is a one way in order to be uh, make the self organized team so empathetic view self organized earn trust these are the key factors which will gain the productivity instead of reducing the productivity i hope okay Yes. Yeah. Especially if you see a teenage 
Uh, I'm not saying like to start with 100% at a time, right. go with the 1% at a time. So definitely uh, whenever you will start the best practicing, yeah. it will help you to go with the 10%, 20% is, yeah. it will go level up. Yeah. I hope I was able to answer your question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Any other question? No? Thank you so much everyone for joining this session.